Hi everybody, Chris and Marina here. Today we're in Universal Studios Hollywood, here for the Taste of Universal, and we invite you to join us on this episode of The, the Walker, Walker Chronicles. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness, man. That, that sounds like magical okay. people. Right. Are, are you a magical person? I, I, I would say that you're a magical person, Marina. I can say that. Yeah, I feel it too. Now, who is that taking the picture? That's my husband. That's your husband. Oh, how sweet. That's your donkey. I mean, your noble steed. I mean, your stallion, baby. All right, so we just uh, headed over towards Three Brooms to actually get some of the fish and chips and the shepherd's pie, which were definitely on the top of our list. And right off the bat, we knew there was going to be an issue because there was a pretty substantial line uh, in order to actually get these items, uh, much longer than we saw it, at least at any other uh, food and taste events, especially at Knott's. Um, once we got through the queue, we got inside, which actually changes the experience quite a bit because there's a ton of great stuff to look at. Um, so you, that time didn't uh, seem to go by pretty quick once we got inside. Uh, once we got inside, we were able to order our food from the counter. It is quite a bit different. The process is very manual here. They actually take your tickets and they actually put hole punches on them rather than scan them like they do at Knott's. After we got, to the, got the food, which like I said, the line was a little bit off-putting, the big issue came to finding seating. Um, when we got outside, they direct you outside to a seating area. There's nowhere near enough tables there to accommodate the amount of people in line or in the park. We actually had to walk quite a bit to a totally different area, and then even then you were out looking for people to get up who were leaving a table to grab one. All right, so we actually have the fish and chips from Three Brooms. As you can see, it actually looks pretty appetizing. It is a single piece of fish with a few fries, a uh, wedge of lemon, and it looks like some tartar sauce, and they will actually give you uh, ketchup and uh, vinegar uh, if you ask for it uh, so like I said I'm gonna cut into this fish here looks pretty uh, pretty crispy on the outside Take the first bite here I'm not gonna put anything on the first bite so uh, when I cut into it it actually cut really nice um, the lots of crunchiness from the outside of the batter um, after taking a bite I will tell you that the fish is incredibly dry inside to the point where it definitely needs something um, a good fish and chip should actually be kind of creamy inside, which this is definitely not. I think it would definitely need to have some uh, vinegar or some other type of sauce uh, on it. But that's the initial impression, it's actually very dry. Um, the chips, good. It's a good french fry. They're more wedge style than regular french fries, which I like. Um, but the, the taste is actually really good. So it's a the fish doesn't taste bad, it's just dry. Uh, the chips are very good, and maybe the tartar sauce or the vinegar will help out with the, uh, with the fish. But uh, not a bad item, just because just the piece of fish we got was dry. I do like tartar sauce. Um, I'm gonna try it without, just to see if it is dry, as Chris says. Let's cut a little piece here. I actually think that this is good. Um, maybe I got a piece that wasn't quite dry. The outside coating on the fish is really nice and um, crunchy and crisp. And the fish isn't flaky or fluffy, um, but it's 
it's fine. It has a nice taste to it. Let me try some with the tartar sauce. It's a nice big beast. But that was actually really quite nice. Um, I think Chris may have gotten a end piece that was maybe overcooked a little bit. But uh, the fish is not, uh, it's not dry. It is moist. Not super flaky though. Um, the tartar sauce is spot on as far as tartar sauce goes. Not too tangy, not too, like too much mayonnaise under uh, undertone. I think this is a great piece of fish. Now let me try the uh, chips. I think the chips are really good also. They are um, nice and soft and creamy on the inside and nice and crisp on the outside. They could use maybe a hint, maybe another pinch of salt, but other than that, I think this is fantastic and uh, I'm really glad that we bought this. After Marina had her piece, I went back and had more of the fish that was more close to the middle and it was not dry at all. It was actually quite good. It definitely had that creamy texture I was looking for. I think the first bit I got was the narrow end of the fish that was overcooked, but that's because the fish got narrow at that end. But uh, no, I would actually change it to where I actually do recommend this dish. I do agree that a little bit more salt, not even on the, not only on the, uh, the chips, but also on the fish for me for more liking, because I'm not a big tartar sauce or a vinegar fan, but uh, no, it is a good dish and I would recommend it. So the next item we have here is actually the shepherd's pie, also from Three Brooms. It does look appetizing. It looks like a small mountain of mashed potatoes, similar to that from Close Encounters. Now I expect inside of it, of course, to actually have some meat and some uh, gravy type uh, sauce inside. So let's uh, get in here and take a look. You can see it's been baked. No, oh, I got all mashed potato in this first bite. A very promising bite, even though it was just mashed potatoes. That's what I expected to see. I see some peas, maybe some mushrooms, some ground beef. And let's try this uh, bite. That is very good. I think that's very good. Good mashed potatoes, good uh, beef, I'm guessing. Uh, definitely vegetables inside there as well. I can see a pea, but I definitely ate some other vegetable. Probably was a mushroom or maybe a cooked carrot. But yeah, no, this is, this is definitely a solid dish. I think um, I actually prefer this over the fish and chips. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend this. Okay, so my turn for the shepherd's pie. It does have quite a bit of uh, mashed potatoes topped, uh, but here we have a big piece of mushroom and uh, some beef underneath. Wow, so this has a ton of flavor. The mashed potatoes on top are really smooth and creamy. I don't taste any lumps in there. The uh, beef and the vegetable mixture seasoned really, really nice. Um, I don't feel that it needs any salt, any extra seasoning to it. It's just a really nice combination of mashed potatoes and that meat and vegetable mixture. So I love this. Uh, I would recommend that you get this if you are making your way here to the Taste of Universal. <laughs> So if you're going to visit Universal Studios Hollywood and you are actually going to visit the Harry Potter section, they say one of the things you have to buy is going to be a butter beer. So that's what we've done here. We actually went over there and you had the choice of either the standard or the frozen, and we opted for the frozen. So this is going to be my, fir my first butter beer ever, and uh, let's give this a shot. That's very tasty. It's like a slushy consistency with a butterscotch flavor. Um, it came up in the straw really easy. Uh, the top looks like a much more like a cream style that's definitely got a much stronger uh, butterscotch flavor to it. I don't know if you're supposed to mix it up or not. I think it's supposed to look like a head on top of a normal beer, but it's very tasty. I would definitely uh, get one of these again.
actually ended up going to the Cocina Mexicana and ended up actually getting the Pollo Chicharrones. I've actually had chicharrones from the pork variety, which are always normally very good, so I'm interested to try the, um, the chicken style, so let's give it a shot. It's fantastic. Probably not the healthiest option, but incredibly tasty and flavorful. And I keep hearing people kind of bash the Mexican food here at Universal. This is my first try. So far, it's been really good. Right, so it's my turn. So I have to start off by saying the line at this place was incredibly long. Um, Chris was off getting food somewhere else. So these have been sitting here for a minute and they're lukewarm, uh, warm to lukewarm. Uh, I did taste some while he was in line and they were hot and they were delicious. So that one had a little meat on it. It's still really good, but these little tiny crispy ones are everything. Yeah, this Cocina Mexicana gets a really bad rap. And I can see some of the things on the menu why they would. But things like this and the uh, corn, the elote, things like that, it's kind of hard to mess up. So for me, this is a thumbs up. Okay, so here also from the Cocina Mexicana is the chili relleno. And this will probably be one of those things that people will say, oh no, why did you get that? Um, you never know until you try it, right? So let's uh, give this a shot. And once again, I have to say, this has been sitting here for a while. The lines here are incredibly long. Um, so it takes a minute. This isn't half bad, um, even kind of on the warmer side. So the batter, isn't bad it could use a little salt um but it's three cheeses inside and then the pepper kind of hard to mess up but um i think it's really good the tomatillo sauce there's a green tomatillo sauce and also this red uh, salsa i think it's i think it tastes really good um i think it would be a whole lot better if it was warm a little bit short there. Aww, Maybe once you grow up. Still on your toes? Oh, almost. A little bit more. More. That's as tall as I can go. That's it, sorry. Aww. No ride for you. got this dish from the Minion Cafe which is a new spot in the park. Um, this is the chicken bacon and ranch mac and cheese. It looks great. Now I'm not normally a fan of ranch however I watched another review online and they said they didn't taste much ranch so I think I'm gonna like this one so let me give it a taste. It looks great. It's got mac and cheese. I can see big chunks of chicken. I can see uh, bacon. Yeah, this is good. Not great. But a good solid disc, primarily probably aimed, aimed uh, towards children. Um, but I'm kind of a big kid, Marina knows that. But I like it, I think it's good. So the chicken is really, really dry. Um, I just picked up a couple of pieces of the mac and cheese and the cheese is like cold and congealed on the macaroni. So not very appetizing, it's not creamy, anything like that. So let's try it. 
I really didn't taste any of the cheese. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here other than it's kind of cold. Um, this is just okay. I would, actually I would pass on this one. All right, so here we have the hazelnut banana pudding from the Minion Cafe. This takes the price for cutest dessert. Um, oh, I can already smell banana. Oh my gosh. This is really good. The banana, it's, it's not like real banana flavoring. There's no pieces of banana in it. And the hazelnut, it's not, not really strong. You can't really eat it and go, oh, it's hazelnut. It's really good. It's my turn with the hazelnut banana pudding. I'm gonna shift the little minion's eyeball over a little bit. Hopefully that didn't hurt, so I can get a good piece. There we go, I got a bunch of hazelnut and banana, and I'm guessing it might be whipped cream on top. Yeah, that is really good. Uh, that is a, a really good combination. Um, yeah, this is a really good dessert. It really tastes like banana. Not overpowering, but there's no doubt that this is a banana-based um, banana dessert. Wow, that's really good. This is definitely something you guys should uh, should get in line and wait for. Unfortunately, you have to wait quite a long time at the Minion Cafe. Um, but it's a very good dessert. Ooh. That's fantastic. You're not much of a talker though, are you? No, he's oh. a bouncer. City Snack Shack, we have a strawberry and chocolate dessert crepe. Um, there's little slivers of strawberry and some strawberry glaze. Uh, let's see what it tastes like. Wow. All right, well, this crepe is incredibly tough. Took quite a bit of effort to cut into it. Um, and I was a little bit surprised by the chocolate on the inside of the crepe. There is a dollop of uh, chocolate whipped cream on top, but inside the crepe, it is dark chocolate. Um, so it has that bitter taste, which I wasn't prepared for. Uh, I like dark chocolate. Um, it's still kind of, the flavor is still kind of lingering in my mouth, and it's not um, it's not a pleasant taste. The strawberry uh, jelly here. Um, it's not it's not the greatest um, I'm not gonna re recommend this as a, a dish that you should get with one of your tickets right, so also from city snacks I have a turkey club crepe witch um, this I can already tell is cold uh, I'm not sure how <laughs> Uh, how long it's been sitting, but um, I'm hoping that the crepe is not as tough as that dessert crepe. So let me try to unwrap this and take a bite. Okay, so here it is. Um, it looks quite nice, um, but there is some of this uh, kind of this a Thousand Island dressing leaking out of the back. Um, let's take a taste. Well, even after just a single bite, this is a really good crepe sandwich. 
the crepe is tender. The turkey slices in, inside are tender and flavorful. They have, it has lots of bacon. I really like this. Um, I would say of the, between this and the dessert crepe, this is the one that you go for. This is my plate from the crepe sandwich. As you can tell, it was quite delicious. I got through all of it and I would get another one if I could, but I don't want to wait 30 minutes in line. <laughs> So this uh, other dessert item came from the same City Snacks. This is actually a Trick Cereal treat. It smells amazing. If you love Trick Cereal, obviously you know what I'm talking about, but it looks like it's gonna be almost like a traditional Rice Krispie treat, but instead of Rice Krispies, we have Tricks. I'm not gonna bite into it. We apologize for the lighting as well. Uh, for some reason, it just keeps turning on and off while we're at. Let's give it a shot. Really good. It's a... Uh, like a Rice Krispie treat on on steroids is what I would call it. Uh, all the fruitiness you get from the uh, from the individual tricks pieces make it really, really good. Um, the only thing I have, well, the only problem I have is that this cost one ticket, the same as a sandwich, the same as the fish and chips, the same as some of the other items that traditionally sell for $10, $12. I think this is normally five, so it's probably not the best use of a ticket. Um, but it still tastes really good. So this is what you have to look forward to when you come here. You get to wait in longer lines than you would for a ride just to get the food that you already paid for. Everybody. Well, we just finished up at uh, Universal for the Taste of Universal. Buckle up, guys, because this is going to be a little bit of a rough ride. Yeah, so obviously we appreciate the fact that the park was open. We appreciate the fact that we can go in and actually look at a lot of the attractions and eat some of the food that we haven't been able to do over the past year. However, I do believe there was a very serious lack of planning. And while I tried to th think of ways to let them off the hook a little bit, I really can't. Let's go over some of the things that I think that that went wrong. I'm not even gonna go for the food side. I'm gonna talk about the sound in the in the in the park. There is music playing at very loud levels and not from one area, but multiple areas that are overlapping. It is this constant sense of noise, 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 noise. And I've heard other people talk about it and they say, well, they have the audio level set up when there's supposed to be a lot more people in the park and they just never lowered it. But I don't know that that actually is the case or not because if it was the case, I guarantee somewhere in that park is a volume knob. And it's not everywhere in the park was like that, but in a lot of areas it was. So that was one of the things that I, I didn't care for. When it comes to the food overall, there was, there was some good food. I, I'm not trying to knock the fact that there was some good food. The biggest problem I had is getting the food the lines to get the food was just out of control. But maybe we just got spoiled of how well Knott's Berry Farm has implemented their food. Now we did see a lot of universal management standing around, mm -hmm. kind of taking a look. There were a lot of people making remarks about, this is the line, are you kidding? Are you joking? I'm not standing in this. I'm hoping that they are listening 
to their guests and really going to adjust. When we first went to Knott's Berry Farm to the Calico events, we saw quite a few people from Disneyland, senior management there at the park, taking a look at the event, seeing what they were doing, seeing what was working, wasn't working. Because obviously I think Disney intended to do something like this a long time ago, but they were in a different position. I'm sure Universal was there as well. I just don't think it was well thought out because if you open the park up and you know you've got a certain capacity you're going to hit every single day and the sole purpose of everybody there at the event is to eat, <laughs> I think it's the one thing you kind of have to nail. But it wasn't just the long lines. is that there were two instances at the park today where we waited in lines for a half hour, 40 minutes, and we got to the window. They didn't have what we wanted. They had ran out of the giant pretzels at one location, uh, some of the... Um, other items, well, the turkey legs. We went to whatever without a turkey leg. They were out of turkey legs. Um, but this is what you find out after you've waited in this long line. And I just think that's kind of unacceptable. I'm used to standing in lines at amusement parks. Um, but it's normally not, to get on a ride, not, not for the for food. food. And if there is a line for food, it's a very uh, short line. Um, and so, we all know that feeling when you get to the front of the line and they tell you, sorry, but... The ride just broke down. That's that's kind of like what happened. It is, except for this was for food, which is the main reason you're there for it. So, yeah. But I think Knott's has kind of set the standard of how this should be done and how they can react to the demand, uh, not run out of food, at least in our experiences. And we went several times to all the different events um, and just to manage, manage it a little bit better. And I think that uh, I'm not mad at Universal. I'm just kind of disappointed because I think it could have been a really good event. It just had a bunch of different things going against it. That's all. Now we want to end this on a positive note. So as we were getting ready to leave, we did have about five extra <laughs> uh, tabs. We uh, had purchased an extra ticket. So with those five tabs, we picked up a giant Bavarian pretzel, mm -hmm. which was very, very good. We brought it home and uh, we have snacked on it quite a mm -hmm. bit. It was and, good. And we picked up uh, two Diet Cokes to wash <laughs> that pretzel down. And uh, also with the remaining two tabs, we picked up two turkey legs for our dogs. So We did. So that was a positive <laughs> note. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel mm -hmm. as it really helps our channel grow. And until the next video, we will see you on the next episode of The, the Walker, Walker Chronicles. Chronicles.